Okay, I recently went through a grounding upgrade here for the ham radio stuff. And I'm going to just walk you through it real quick. Uh, one thing to note is my, my ham radio shack is pretty much uh, all QRP related. And it's all off-grid. Solar, battery powered. There's my solar panel. So, any, uh, there are no connections from my ham radio setup to the household power um, grid or anything like that. It's totally isolated out here and uh, all the power is generated from battery and solar. So uh, this just keeps it all separate so I don't have to worry about bonding to the household grounds or anything like that. It's totally off grid. All right so basically to start out with uh, before I just had a uh, I have a ground bar in the shack and I had a number flex, number two flex come out and just bonded right to this chintzy old, it's, ground, it's a ground rod but it isn't nothing spectacular. So I use that as my main ground bus bar for uh, my stuff there. So what we did was uh, to improve that we came out and we went down with a good old copper ground rod, like you should be using. And I got a number uh, six uh, solid copper cable coming up. And we'll look inside, look at this inside my box here. We'll flip this up and over. And inside, so basically all this right here is all new. I put the bus bar out here. These, uh, the uh, DX engineering suppressor and four to one ballon, they were grounded uh, over here to that bar right there too with just number 10 braided wire, kind of real light stuff. So, and I used to, when I had a coax connection, you know, this is my ladder line surge suppressor. If I had a, uh, a coax going out to an antenna, I used one of these in the middle. It's one of these MFJ suppressors and uh, it worked, you know, it's worked fine, but I wanted something a little better, a little more centralized, everything in one box in one area so I could uh, make connections and disconnections here pretty easy. So basically, again, I got the uh, number six copper straight up from the ground rod going to my main bus bar out here. And uh, on the main bus bar, I've got uh, upgraded my coax surge suppressors with the uh, Morgan Model M300 HF arrester uh, bolted right to the, uh, to the main bus bar there. I've got two of them here, one for backup, or if I ever put up another NFED wire antenna, uh, that's what I'll use that for. That's what this is currently used on, is an NFED wire antenna, coax fed. So over here, I have my 450 ohm ladder line, which goes up here to my DX engineering surge suppressor. And that ground is connected over here with green, it's number six uh, wire, and it's braided number six. And there's connection to the main bar. And also on the uh, four to one ballon, that's coming over here and connected there as well. And I've got a spare DX Engineering and 4 to 1 Ballon, both connected to the bus bar as well. Um, I do have, so that that uh, that uh, bus bar in the house on my desk uh, that I was originally using, that's connections right here. So I do still have that connected. I've got this number two flex going into the shack and it's connected to that bus bar. So anything uh, in the house, in the shack that I need to ground will uh, come out here and get grounded to the main the main system. And I uh, put these standoffs in to help kind of uh, uh, ease the tension of a bending and hanging here. They come straight out and then they kind of waterfall off on both sides. Kind of keeps the tension off of hanging here. And I've got one up there, two up here for, for the, the, that surge suppressor there. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell that I can think of. Um, I hopefully uh, 
My biggest concern was, you know, these wire antennas was bleeding off that static buildup that comes in on those wires. And, uh, you know, I just did a recent video that, uh, <laughs> that showed how much static electricity is actually built up in those on those wires. So I wanted to kind of beef things up and change things around and uh, do it this way. So hopefully uh, that'll discharge any static coming off those wires. Uh, direct hit from lightning probably vaporize everything in this box. But uh, typically if I know there's a storm coming, I'm going to be out here disconnecting any of the connections going into the house. This is a 12 foot coax goes into the house and feeds into my my switchers in the house. Uh, both of these are. So I just come out here and I just disconnect them off and and uh, secure them so that uh, if there's a lightning storm coming, the uh, everything is disconnected going into the house and it's isolated to out here. And I think that's all I got. So uh, that's that's how I upgraded. And I'm sure there are a lot of opinions. I'm sure I did something wrong, but uh, uh, this is uh, what I did and hopefully uh, it'll work and kind of keep things grounded and working properly. All right, well, thanks for watching and uh, hope to hear you on the air sometime and we'll say 7-3.